Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Object Oriented Programming. In this episode we're going to continue on the idea of migrating from procedural to object oriented code. And in particular, Python has a keyword called property that we're going to look at to add behavior to attributes. So imagine we wrote some code to store a color and its hex value. So we have class color, it's INIT takes in a red, green, blue value and its name. So colors are generally defined in computers by a combination of red, green and blue. Uh, an amount of red, an amount of green, an amount of blue tells you what color it's going to be. And it takes in a name as well. So if we created a variable called red color, and we said that's of type color and it's taking in its RGB value and its name is red. Just a brief word to explain what, what the FF means. In web design in particular, when we represent colors, we represent the colors being for anything from zero to one to two to three to four to five to six to seven to eight to nine to A to B to E. C to E to, to D to, e to F. So that's not the decimal system, it's called the hexadecimal system. And if a, a color has a value FF, it means it's the highest strength of that color. And in RGB, the first one is red, the next two digits represent green, the next two digits represent blue. So you've got all red, no green, no blue. And then if we print out red color dot name, it'll print out red is FF 0000, just like that. So there's nothing special about that. We've just put in two values, and then printed them out in the other order. If we change the color name then to bright red, it should come out as bright red. Sometimes instead of doing that directly though, we instead of assigning the name directly and, and printing it out, we create a method methods called getters and setters. The getters gets the name and the setter sets the name in this case. So our, our getter and setter in this case, the INIT is the same, except we've changed the variable names to underscore RGB and underscore name, just to try and indicate to the programmer that these are private that you shouldn't be accessing self underscore name. If you want to know the name of something, just get name for self and it'll take care of the name variable. And if you want to set the name, don't change it. Just call the method set name. So as we said, INIT class is as before, except we've preceded the variables with an underscore to say, don't try and change these variable names directly. And our set name, as you can see, sets the name instead of having to do x dot underscore name to be read, we do set name read. And instead of doing print x dot underscore name, we just do get name. So this works well, and then we can get the color name in two ways. We can either do print red color dot underscore name or print red color dot get name. And at the moment, there's no difference between them. But the, the, the difference is we could later add additional functionality onto the get name method. So let's say we want to check if somebody set the name to blank, this color is called blank. Then instead of returning just a blank, we could return a message saying this is a blank value, there is a blank value. Else we'd return the actual name. So then if we did red color, the same as red, and then we asked to get the name, it would print out red. But if we change the color's name to blank, then it print out there as a blank value. That only works obviously if we call it using the get name. If we print red color dot underscore name, it will it'll print out just blank. Now the problem is if this code has been around for a while before I created the getters and setters, there might be a bunch of code that is is printing out just red color dot underscore name. So none of that code will take into account, will print back the message. There is a blank. It'll just return a blank. That can get confusing then. 
So it would be great if there was an, a way that even if somebody says print red color dot underscore name, we could force the method to run the getter anyway. Because you've got all this legacy code that's just printing out the dot print underscore dot underscore name and it might be hard to find it and revise it all. So if we had a magic property and we do have a magic function called property that takes the second statement print red color dot underscore name and treats it as if I've said print red color dot get name anyway and runs that function. So the property forces the get name method to be run every time we try and print out the value of name and the property forces set name to be run every time we try and assign a new value to that variable. So we just add the following line of code to the end of the class name equals property open bracket underscore get name and underscore set name. And then whichever way the program is called to get or set a value, these methods will be executed. Just to note a little bit more detail on properties as well as getters and setters, there are two other attributes that property can have. A get, a set, a delete, and a, a doc strings. And we've seen doc strings before. So I've compressed the code a little bit here just to, to show you the INIT. This method is called a life. So I INIT a life. Maybe we're playing a video game and we're we're getting a life. We're setting a life. We're deleting a life. And then we're um setting the doc strings to be a particular string. You can see it there. My life dot property get set del and doc strings. I'll just talk about this for a minute. The getter and setter I'm happy with, they're fine. The delete I'm not happy with at all. I, I would rarely, if ever, use a delete. I think it's a dangerous idea. I think I would never delete an object unless there's dire memory management problems or processor requirements or something. I'd prefer to just have a field on an object called deleted yes or no. And if you set that to yes, then all programs that try to talk to it should check that field. And if it's set to yes, they'll just ignore it. There's a lot of reasons for that. I think it's a bad idea to delete objects once you've created them, because I don't know if the program crashes and it's something to do with that object. If it's deleting it, you mightn't be able to find out what's causing the crash. And even in, let's say this was a business system and it was somebody's accounts package and you're deleting old customers accounts. That's not a good idea at all, because if that old customer comes back and says, well, I need my accounts from 1994. So I definitely think it's a good delete is a nice idea, but I'd prefer a Boolean variable set to be true or false. The doc strings is handy though. So then if I do help a life, it gives me uh, the doc strings description of it, um, as well as what the INIT does, the same as doc strings typically does. So that's that. That's property. It magically transforms. It allows you to, uh, uh, what I would say is use legacy code or pre-existing code that would do assignments in an old way and use them in a new system by forcing the getter or setter to activate when you do assignments in a different way. Hope that's enjoyable and have a go with it. Thanks very much. We'll see you guys in the next episode.